Hello. Welcome back to another Young in the Home here at Young at the Parks. We are going to the UK for another Universal Yums. So if you haven't seen our Universal Yums um, snack subscription box reviews, we will link the other two videos down below. Um, it's a monthly snack box subscription and each month is a different country. Um, we've done Scandinavia and Philippines. Um, the Philippines so far. So this box will cover um, the United Kingdom. Yeah. So we have a bunch of different snacks, everything from savory to weird like banana toffee to yeah, clotted fun. cream and um, fizzies and all those kinds yeah, of fun stuff. Yeah, so, lots of crisps too. Lots of crisps. I'm excited for this box. <laughs> yeah, so it'll be fun and uh, we're gonna dive right in. All right, so in our little booklet that you get with each box, it tells you a little bit um, about some facts from each country. There's some trivia and then of course all the information about the snacks you receive. Um, so I'm going to read to you the UK in 60 seconds. Can you put a timer on the clock please now? Timer now. All right. What you might not know about the UK. Great Britain and the UK are not the same thing. Great Britain is a single island containing Scotland, England, and Wales. Meanwhile, the UK is made up of all the countries of Great Britain as well as Northern Ireland. P.S. The name Ireland also refers to an island, not a country. It's made up of Northern Ireland in the top and the Republic of Ireland at the bottom. Time. Any questions? So our first snack will be... Mackey's Honey and Mustard Potato Crisps. Honey mm. Mustard Potato Chips. So many world changing, ooh, so many world changing innovations have come from the UK. Harry Potter, Hey Jude, Newton's Laws of Gravity. They're all very different things. All over the place. But to us, one novel revelation tops them all: crisps, or as we call them on the other side of the pond, potato chips. An 1817 cookbook by Englishman William. Kitchener's The Cook's Oracle contained the first known potato chip recipe in the world. As you might expect, the book was a bestseller. Soon, potato chips changed the world's cuisine, cuisine well, forever. Which brings us to these honey mustard crisps. Each one is coated with a notoriously strong spiciness of English mustard and a touch of sweet honey for the perfect way to celebrate the origins of the potato chip and to kick off our rollicking UK adventure. Ooh, fun. These are Mackey's of Scotland honey and mustard mm. flavor, spelled with a U. How <laughs> I smell? It smells like potatoes. Oh, well, that's good. It doesn't really smell like mustard or honey or anything. They're pretty thick cut. Yeah. So. Thick. It's not like much. Hmm. Weird. Yeah, they're not very good. Hmm. Kind of a... Like onion. I don't, I don't even know if I would say onion. They just have a very artificial taste to them. Yeah. They, I taste the mustard, but it's not... Sort of, yeah. Yeah, it's not like any mustard that... Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, not a fan. Um, onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, turmeric. Like the chips themselves are really nice. Like they're super yeah. crunchy and like thick cut, but I taste, I don't know if I taste any of the honey. I taste yeah. the mustard, but I can't really place like what type. I like all types of mustard, like, but I don't know what kind of mustard this would be. I feel like I get mustard for like a second and then it's gone and it just tastes weird. Yeah, it's like really, really sharp on the like front of it, but then... Yeah. Yeah, all right. Not our favorite. No. Next up we have Grandma's Grandma Wild's Toffee Flapjacks. Flapjacks with an S, even though there's already one. Uh, it is an oat bar with toffee. Mm -hmm. One thing people in the US and the UK have in common, question mark. Their love of flapjacks. That was a very strange sentence. Well, sort of. But we think of flapjacks as another word for pancakes, but in the UK, there's something completely different. There, flapjacks are made up with oats, butter, brown sugar, and syrup, spread into a tray, baked, and cut into bars, and sometimes, if you're lucky, slathered with soft toffee. Sounds like we all have a new kind of flapjack to start loving. Interesting. Hmm. So I've gotten like a knife for this one. No, kind of break it. It's like a little cake almost. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a like a cake and then the 
like, like icing on, on it top, almost. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Not bad, but nothing amazing. It tastes like really, really sugary oatmeal. Yeah, I can see that. Because this is definitely, yeah, like an oat cake. And then, like, I wouldn't really describe the top as, like, toffee, though. No. Well, it's soft toffee. That's true. So it's not like, no. whatever. It's really buttery. And really like creamy, but yeah, it tastes like oatmeal. Yeah, to me, like a really sugary, like cinnamon caramel oatmeal. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Candy time! All right. So next one are Bristow's sherbet lemons, fizzy lemon hard candies. Yeah, you already know what sherbet is, and especially a colorful, fruity ice cream like dessert. But as this section teases, there is a lot of different meaning in the UK. There, sherbet is the name of a fizzy powder found inside many tangy candies, such as these zingy lemons. One more thing. In the UK, you might hear a local ask his mate if he wants to hit the pub for a sherbet. That's because sherbet is also slang for beer, which coincidentally brings us to our next few yums. Really? It's sherbet. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're right. Sherbet. Isn't that weird? Sherbet. I only realized that like a couple years ago. Sherbet. 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 But I always, you always say sherbet. It's sherbet. So, if sherbet. I know, it sounds weird. Oh, but I hate that. <laughs> if it's slang for beer, is it all beer in the UK or is it some kind, kind of beer? I don't know. Like, like a we shandy? Call, we call beer suds sometimes, like an old way of saying it. I've never like, heard that. Suds. Yeah. I've never heard that. I've heard brewski. <laughs> but I've never heard sud. Well, I'm trying Suds. to think like what's another what's another slang for beer that you've heard? Suds. Where would you hear that? It's like an old timey kind of thing. Yeah. I've never heard that. Yeah. That's fascinating though. All right, let's eat some candy. I love lemon. Lemony. Mmm. It's lemony. Yeah. Mm. So you could like bite into it to get the fizzy stuff. I'm kind of scared to bite into it right now. Mm. I did it. Fizzy? Mm hmm. Not overly though. Yeah, stronger teeth than I am. Well, I like to get it on the side, kind of. It doesn't really fizz as much as I thought it would. Mm -hmm. Like, there's also these candies that, I'll put a picture in right here, that are like fizzing, like, cola candies that are like supposed to be like extreme sour. Oh, those are crazy. I think we first tried them, where they're from the Japan Pavilion in Epcot, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what I was expecting. Like, they're, they're hard candies, but there's like a hole in the side of them, so when you put them in your mouth, it's like, like the carbonation, they're like bubbling. It's so strange. So I was kind of expecting that with this, but I didn't really get a lot. Did you bite into it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. They're really good. Like I like the lemon flavor. They're not overly tart or overly sweet. Like they're really nice, like even killed lemon, but I don't really know how they like yeah. fizz on the inside. No, they really fizz. It wasn't anything crazy, but it's oh, good. Yeah, not bad. Good hard candy. Yeah, decent hard candy. Yeah. So next up we have some more candy, which I'm also excited about. Bristow's Bucks Fizz Chews. These are fizzy orange and champagne chews. There's nowhere better to grab a drink in London. Why? Well, it's home to 1,327 bars, the most of any city in the world. That's crazy. That's crazy. I wonder if there's anyone that lives there that's like been to them all. That would be a fun like bucket list, like to say right? that you've been to them all. Um, it's also where Buck's Fizz, a beloved cocktail made from two parts champagne and one part orange juice, was invented in 1921. How is that not a mimosa? Oh, well, I should probably keep reading because it says it was invented in 1921, four years before the mimosa in Paris. Uh huh. Paris trying to steal it. When it comes to this chewy Buck's Fizz inspired candy, don't worry if you're not over 21. Not because the UK drinking age is 18, but because this chew contains zero bubbly, only 100% citrusy deliciousness. Oh, I want a refund. Gosh. These are pretty. Yeah, they're just like little like, like chewy. Yeah. 
Wow. Mm. These are so good. Mm. They're so orangey. And mm. it does have a champagne flavor. Think yeah. of also like the consistency of like a saltwater taffy. Mm -hmm. The mouth is like salivating. It's like so mm. citrusy. Yeah, that's but good. Now for the first weird one. <laughs> Johnny's pickled onion rings. Pickled onion potato rings. So you're sitting at the bar enjoying your Buck's Fizz and the bar bartender sets down a snack. What do you think it is? Peanuts? Nope. Fries? Nah. Onion rings? Close, but no. It's a jar of pickled onions. Munching these miniature malt vinegar marinated onions straight out of the jar is a timeless tradition in UK pubs. Dig into these addictive pickled onion inspired crisps to experience the intensely tangy tradition for yourself. This can be like funions. Yeah, so like are these UK funions? Sounds like funions. Which I like funions, so. Oh wow, that smells like straight up vinegar. Holy Moses. They're also really small. Oh, they're like super tiny. Little, like, um, Mini Funyuns. Yeah. Okay. Mmm. Okay. Like feet. Like feet. Okay, hopefully they smell like vinegar to me. Tastes like vinegar. Wow. You don't like them, dude. Well, because I don't like like salt and vinegar chips. I'm not a big fan of yours. You love those. Literally. I love this. Mmm. <laughs> like, they're not bad. I won't say that they're bad personally. Not a big fan of the flavor of vinegar. Wow, I only ate two and I can already feel like my entire tongue. <laughs> Think dill pickle meets um, salt and vinegar and then dial yeah. that up like to 10 <laughs> and that is, I've literally only yeah. eaten three and I can like feel, I I'm so that. sorry, my breath is gonna no. be like, what? <laughs> wow, those are so good. I'm mad that I like these so much. Yeah, you're gonna be like SpongeBob about things Sunday. I know, like, okay. I'm gonna, I've only had like three. <laughs> wow. So next <clears throat> up is Bean's Shortbread Rounds. Yum. This yum story takes us to rural Huntley, Scotland. It begins as many Scottish tales begin with bagpipes. Back in 1975, Bill and Helen Bean wanted to raise money and throw them on the table for a pipe band of which Bill was a drummer. They could, and they could think of no better way than selling Helen's super crumbly, extra buttery shortbread. Fast forward to today, and the Deans of Huntley are a household name across Scotland, but for baked goods, not bagpipes. Mm. So crumbly is right, because I literally <laughs> opened the package and they're all like broke, yeah. but that's okay. They're like, yeah, just really standard, like, shortbread. But very like, crispy and airy. Yeah. They actually weren't good at first, and then they got better. Because they had a very, very artificial taste to begin with. I think I like the shortbread that we had in the Philippines mm. box a little more, the dust. That was good. These are good, there's nothing wrong with them. They're just like, maybe not the best shortbread. Yeah. Like, I'm kind of surprised they didn't send us waffles. The more of these boxes I get, the more I think what the fluff was saying was right mm -hmm. in that these are somewhat indicative of <clears throat> snacks you would buy in the UK, but they're all random brands mm. that you wouldn't necessarily know because they're okay. probably cheaper and that lets you get more snacks in your box for a more reasonable price. Okay. Because I feel like if they put Walker shortbread in everybody's box and that would be expensive. They'd be like, oh, yeah. okay. I don't know. If you are from the UK and watching this or have been to the UK, have you heard of any of these snacks that look familiar to you? Yeah. That is that is something that I would be curious to know. I would love to get a box where we've been to the country because that is something we love to do when we travel, um, especially to different countries, is we go to like their gas stations or like um like like um corner shops like corner shops stores. and stuff like that and we yeah. buy a bunch of snacks just to try it like especially like candy or um like chips and stuff like that just because it you know oh yeah it's just fun and it's so cheap yeah like, we did that a lot in germany we even ate that for dinner one night yeah we did in canada canada we did that <laughs> a bunch in canada we came back to our room um one night in vancouver and we literally had like snacks in the um front desk 
at the hotel we were staying at was like, are you guys from the States? <laughs> and we're, we're like, like yeah. Oh, and then they gave us, but he gave us recommendation, recommendations of like, oh, you guys should try this. And we're yeah. like, okay. That's where we had cheesers from. Those were really good. <laughs> cheesers but were I love good. that. That's yeah. what I love about this box too. Like it's so, you know, like I just like, I like trying new things. This is what we would be doing yeah. in any country, so it's fun. I know. Such Americans. <laughs> Next one, I'm not sure about. Oh, that banana. Is yummy banana toffee. I love banana. I just don't like banana flavoring. I just like plain. And this one says we have to whack it, then unwrap it. That is very <laughs> concerning. Beat it against the right. friggin' table. Let's see what it says about the yummy banana toffee bar. You might associate bagpipes with Scotland, but do you associate bananas with England? You're about to. Centuries ago, a Jamaican banana known as Big Mike used to be Big eaten worldwide, Mike. but an 1890 banana disease destroyed all of them. Luckily, in Derbyshire, England, a local duke named William Cavendish cultivated a new disease-resistant banana, which we still eat to this day. If that's not enough to get the Banana Britain Association to stick, then this decadent chewy toffee ought to do the trick. All right, let's whack it. Oh yeah, but it's like, it's in pieces oh, already. Oh, I was like. And that kind of breaks That's gonna break our teeth. Yeah, it is, I can already tell. I can already. Well, luckily, this side kind of shattered so we can get little small pieces. So I don't want a big piece. Yeah, I can already like tell it's gonna be like in my teeth. Is it hard? Um, it looks hard. Sure. Oh, it smells like oh, it banana smells runs. Like banana. Ew. All right, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna bite off this already small piece. I'm just gonna lick mine. I don't really do anything. I'm just gonna eat it. Is it bad? I don't know. Ugh. I wouldn't say it's bad, but it definitely just tastes like banana, like artificial banana. And it definitely gets stuck in your teeth. Oh my god, that was a horrible idea. No, yeah, I just should done. I was like the um what did we what did we do last time that you put the whole thing in your mouth? The Philippines or was that Scandinavia? I don't know, it's Philippines. Yeah. It would be so good if it didn't have banana in it. <laughs> yeah, it was good consistency. Um but yeah. I'll make sure on this for like the next two hours, but this next one I'm very excited about. More candy. This is Ooh. Oh. I can tell if it's just oh like my. a wrapper or what? This is yeah. also like a really big bag. Big bag. And they're all individually wrapped. Yeah. So that's good value. And they're like. So. What do we got? This what is Bristow's Clotted Cream Fudge. To taste the UK's famous clotted cream, we're heading to Devon. Gasp. The controversy. You see. Two English counties, Devon and Cornwall, both say they invented clotted cream. A rich spread made when hot cream slowly cooled, creating clots of cream. And both counties still compete over who makes the best. With this decadent fudge trying the Devonshire version, we guess we'll just have to come back one day and try the Cornish variety. You said you're just biting it? Yeah. It looks a lot softer than the other kind. Mmm. Yeah. I like it. Oh, that's good. Yeah, not a fan. Mmm. Yeah, not a fan. These are really good. Oh, maybe just add some banana in my mouth. Let me try one more time. But eat the whole thing. Let me just have a bite. It's soft. I know it's soft. Those are really good. Alright, that was a little better. Mm -hmm. Fine. They're like, um... Like, almost like a Werther's. But not like the toffee, where it is like a like a caramel chew kind of thing, maybe. Where it's like gritty is the wrong word, but it like it falls it like it falls apart in your mouth, whereas you're not like sitting there chewing it. But it's like creamy, toffee-y, not overly like sweet yeah. or like artificial. That's pretty good. Yeah, they're really good. I think the first bite I still had some banana taste yeah. in my mouth. So. Yeah, like fudge. Yeah. It's good. I would, yeah, yeah, I would eat more of this. Yeah. Well, we got big bags. Yeah, right? Yum. All right, you ready to get weird again? <laughs> I'm kind of dreading these. Mm. There's two things that I'm dreading. These and the other crisps. All right. 
What do we have next? Welsh potato crisps in lamb and mint flavor. Looking for lamb? You can't go wrong in Wales. The 11 million sheep outnumber humans three to one. My gosh. They account for 80% of Welsh agriculture. But within Wales, there's no better place for lamb than the quaint town of Brecon, located just below a mountain range where thousands of sheep are raised. The town is known for super soft wool products and delicious lamb dishes, including the mint season roast lamb that inspired these crisps. The best part, no actual lambs went into the making of them. Unbelievable. Hate that. Right. Mmm, they smell like meat. They're very oh, interesting. Those are big. Yeah, they are. And they're thick cut too, kind of like the other ones. Well, you can have that one. I got that for you. Really? They do smell like meat and slightly like, like mint. mint. So. Do you like mind. lamb? Oh, I love dish. lamb. I like lamb a lot. I'm just going to bite this. I don't know if I want this whole thing. Huh. That's not bad. Hmm. Weird though. Wow. That's a bizarre one. Again. The actual crisp, very good. Yeah, it's like fantastic. A, again, thick cut, super crispy. Not, you know, but I don't know, I like the flavor. I don't think it tastes like lamb. Maybe it's slightly. So, yeah, you were saying that these don't really taste like lamb, but only at the yeah, end. Yeah, at the end they sort of do. And like, I don't really get any mint besides my mouth kind of being cool now. A little bit. I get the mint. No, I don't really get that much. I get the mint. I get like a nice like herby like thyme maybe. Yeah, I can see that. But I don't know if I would like discern this as lamb. Like if I didn't know then I'd be like that's not something I would pick up on. It's kind of meat. All right. Yeah, they're okay. Right, so another interesting one next. We have <clears throat> chewy bonbons, rhubarb, and custard. Ooh, that is exciting. In England, <clears throat> few desserts are as fancy as the fool. <laughs> now, don't go thinking Brits run around licking clowns or anything like that. In Britain, fool refers to an extremely popular parfait-like dessert made of alternating layers of custard and boiled fruit, or most popularly, boiled rhubarb. A unique veggie with tangy, berry-like flavor. Yum. It is this variety of fool that inspired these juicy chews. Beware, they may make you wish your fave candies were a bit more foolish. Here. Here. Not <clears throat> it's a chew? <clears throat> oh yeah, hard. Oh, shoot, really? Yeah, I would just bite it. Mmm, they're really hard. Hmm. They're very chewy. Very, very, very chewy. Not. It gets better the more you chew, though. Mm -hmm. It's hard to chew. Yeah. Like, the flavor's pretty good. Yeah. I definitely get the rhubarb. Mm hmm. I get a little bit of the custard, kind of on like the back of my tongue. See, I get the custard because the rhubarb is not as like tart to me. Like these are definitely like sweeter. Yeah. <clears throat> and rhubarb is like very like tart and like what's that word? Like bright tasting, I guess. <clears throat> and these are definitely like mild, very like even keeled. Like that's the custard to me. They're pretty. They're pretty good. <clears throat> I don't know if I could sit here and eat like a ton yeah, of them though, just because it took me like two minutes to chew one. Yeah, but yeah. Okay. I think I like the orange and champagne too. Oh, those are the best. I wish we had a whole bag of those. Right? Man, I those know. Are amazing. So, alright. <clears throat> pretty good. Nothing yeah. incredible, but very pretty good. So, getting near the end here, second to last <clears throat> one. Kent crisps, Ashmore cheese, and onion. Ooh. I don't know about this. Open this package and take a whiff. Oh, well. The bold cheese. Yeah, do it. 
It doesn't smell bad, but it doesn't smell great. Mm. Why does everything smell like beef? <clears throat> the bold, cheesy aroma you're smelling, that's the defining scent of UK crisps. Introduced in 1962, Cheese and Onion has consistently beat out other top contenders for the spot as UK's mm. favorite crisp flavor. This particular variety is extra special. It's seasoned with a prized Ashmore cheddar prepared by master cheesemakers in Canterbury, England. Basically, you better quit sniffing and start noshing. All right, I'll give you a little one. I have a big one. Ooh, I like these. Oh, that's pretty good. These are good. Very different chip, sorry, crisp consistency than the other two in terms of like, these, while still thick cut, maybe like thinner because they're crispier versus being yeah. crunchier like the other kind. Yeah. Um, they kind of taste like um, the cheddar and sour cream ruffles. Oh yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, not bad. Pretty but good. But like elevated. Yeah. These are really good. Yeah, tasty. Okay. I would eat. This is probably the only chip that yeah. we got that I would eat. Oh, you like the pickled onion ones. Oh yeah, I love this. <laughs> All right, for our last yum is a candy. Bristow's chocolate lime. Lime hard candy with chocolate filling. Stonehenge, Loch Ness, the UK is teeming with seemingly inexplicable mysteries. Here's one more, chocolate limes. It's hard to believe anyone would put these two flavors together in a candy, let alone it'd be explosively popular. <clears throat> but this unusual sweet with its hard lime flavored shell and smooth chocolate center has been a UK candy shop staple since it debuted, debuted, oh my gosh, since it debuted in the 1980s. Pop one in your mouth and decide, is this a truly inexplic inexplicable mystery or an open and shut case? Hmm. <clears throat> They're very interesting looking. Yeah, it's definitely like, this is a huge hard candy, first of all. And, and you can see the chocolate inside. But how am I supposed to get to it? Am I supposed to bite on this again? I guess, but I don't want to. Mmm. Limey. I'm gonna show it up. That's very limey. Yeah, mm. I don't really like these. Did you bite it? No, but I can bite tell it. I don't like it. Oh, Ew, weird. Uh, I hate that. That's really weird. Yeah, I don't like that at all. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, you didn't like them. Yeah. It almost tasted like dark chocolate in it. It was like pretty bitter and it was yeah. just like, it wasn't like <clears throat> creamy or, I don't really like. It was almost like a weird chocolate flavored thing. Yeah, like the actual, maybe it would be better, better if there was like different chocolate inside, yeah. but. Yeah, no, really. the lime itself was really good. Like it was, it was just limey. a plain lime, like hard candy. Yeah. But not for me. Yeah. No. Yeah. Good. Um. So yeah. So now for our rankings for the favorite, worst, and weirdest. What was your favorite? My favorite was the pickled onion rings. I knew you were gonna say that. For savory, and then oh no, the champagne and orange mm. chews for sweet. I would agree with the champagne and orange chews. What was your I favorite savory? I don't think I have favorite savory. I really didn't like mm. them overly yeah. that much. What about the shortbread cookie? Shortbread was okay. Or I like the the toffee flapjack was pretty good. Yeah. So th those are my probably my, my two favorites. All right. What was the worst? Her least favorite. Uh, the banana. Yeah, the banana was pretty yeah. bad. There's so much like artificial banana tasting. And then it's like you're stuck with it because it's all in your teeth. Yeah, either the banana or the chocolate lime. Yeah. I don't like the chocolate lime at all. Yeah. Uh, what was the weirdest? Oh, I guess the chocolate lime. I would say the chocolate lime or the lamb and mint crisps. Yeah, the Those lamb and mint weird. were weird because I couldn't quite put a like a flavor profile yeah. on it, but but at least the chocolate and mint, like they pretty much tell you that's exactly what you're yeah, getting. And but that's exactly what it tastes. Yeah, but the lamb and mint was like I can't yeah. really put a like a finger on what this is. So overall, that was pretty like overall, it was pretty good. 
pretty good box. Uh, nothing was horrible. Yeah. Nothing was, you know, super weird. But I'd say that it's second behind Scandinavia. Yeah, Scandinavia was so it good. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so, the next country does not have any hints, poems, or otherwise. Or a riddle like they normally do. So, it said you can vote on, the, on an upcoming box, and that is between the Netherlands, Italy, and Germany. Um, but where they normally have the, like, hint for the next box, it says, do you want to know where we're going next? If the answer yes, it says, follow us on Instagram or Facebook. In a week or two, we'll post a tricky clue about next month's country. Then, on the first of next month, we'll officially announce where we're going. And you can see if you were right, just a little off or a world away. Hmm. And if the answer no, they say, fine, we won't tell you. <laughs> but we will tell you one more thing about the UK. Did you know that the legend of the Loch Ness Monster goes all the way back to the year 565? Spooky. Holy cow. Wow. All right. So yeah. Um, I would do another box, would you? Maybe. I don't know. I feel like we say that after every one and then we end up doing yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. You know, I guess it depends on where they're going, but... Yeah. Cause I really miss, I like the riddle cause I like her to guess like yeah, where it is. I would like that. So of the upcoming ones, this doesn't mean that this would be one next, but they're letting you vote. Um, if you could vote on an upcoming box, what do you guys think we should vote on? Netherlands, Italy, or Germany? Yeah, let us know in the comments below what we should vote on. And also let us know if you're from the UK, like we said before, yeah. and you recognize any of these snacks and they're actually real snacks that people really eat. Let us know, because we're always curious about that. Which one would you vote for? I would actually probably go for Italy. Really? Yeah, because I feel like that might be the most different. Oddly I would enough. think the Netherlands well, would be. Well, because we had Scandinavia, that's pretty close to Netherlands. Yeah. And we've been to Germany, we've eaten a lot of German snacks. So yeah. So we kind of already know about that. I just want an entire box of Haribo from Germany. <laughs> Implying that they would ever give us Haribo. I effect. know. But Italy, I guess it would probably be like a lot of, I don't know, because I don't really associate Italy with like snacks. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. It would like, be I like don't know dessert would be. items, yeah. I guess I would, you know, but, yeah, or coffee stuff. Could be. Okay. Yeah, so that'd be All interesting. Right. Maybe we'll get Italy. We'll, well see. let's see. But since we have the United Kingdom, let's test our trivia knowledge on the United Kingdom. All right, so I'm gonna ask Joe a couple trivia questions. Ooh. Six blank are kept in the Tower of London at all times. A, candles, B, trumpets, C, ravens, or D, bowling balls? I'm gonna say candles. Six ravens are kept in the Tower of London at all times. Hmm. King Charles II believed six ravens must reside in the tower or else it would crumble. His superstition stuck. Today, the tower is occupied by Jubilee, Harris, Grip, Rocky, Aaron, Poppy, and Merlina. A seventh raven kept just in case, just in case what, one die? I guess, yeah, apparently. They, there used to be a raven named George, but he was retired to Wales after attacking TV attendants. Ooh. No, we're not joking. That's, right, that's awesome, good. okay. Like that. that is really good, okay. <clears throat> Second question, if you have a chance to redeem yourself. Okay. Which of the following is a real event in Wales? A, human versus horse marathons. B, adult versus child spelling bees. C, cat versus dog beauty pageants. Or D, seal versus teen swimming races. Let's go with the dog versus cat beauty pageants. And a, human versus horse marathons. The horse is gonna win every time. In 1980, pub owner Gordon Green overheard two patrons discussing whether a man could beat a horse in a long distance run. Naturally, he decided to put the idea to a test. He organized an annual horse versus human marathon. In the 40 years it's been held, humans have managed to beat the horses twice. That's that crazy. is crazy. That Something is crazy. that you hear in your bar and you're like, eh, let's see if, let's give it a if shot. they can do it. Right. That's fascinating. That is fun. That was a fun fact. Those were fun facts. So yeah, that was a very interesting box. I enjoyed that. I did too. It was good. 
Well, if you liked our Universal Yums, uh, give us a thumbs up. In the description down below, we will be putting a discount code courtesy of our friends over at The Flept. So if you'd like to sign up for Universal Yums, make sure to use that code because you will get $5 off your first box and they'll get $5 off their next one. Um, their channel also has a bunch of Universal Yums content on it. So if you want to see some of the past months that we didn't talk about or even some ones we did, definitely check them out. If you want to see more of our adventures here, Young at the Parks, sometimes Young at the Home, make sure to subscribe, click the bell icon to get notified every time we go live with new videos. And as always, we will see you next time for more Young at the Parks.